<laughs> she may be old, but she still screws like a hook on payday. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the desk. Today, we're going to look at an old bird. This has been in my toolbox for many, many years. It's literally been abused and abused and abused. And I cannot believe it is still going. Fuck yeah. We're going to take a look at this old bird. See, see what makes her run. Um, I don't really have much use for her anymore. Uh, because I've replaced it with this one. Uh, DeVault 18 volt brushless driver um, but I'm still keen to see how she's handled the last 10 years of her life uh, as you can see there's a little bit of a cord a non cordless problem over here um, <laughs> the battery lasted lasted quite a while many a couple of years and uh, you know as with normal normal wear and tear these things get old and we ended up, uh, I think, repacking the cells once, and uh, the drill worked for a bit longer, but then after that, kind of, you know, just gave up the ghost. So, that is when the cordless drill became a cordless corded drill, <laughs> and we used to run it on, on this guy. I don't have the actual batteries anymore, but uh, I've still got the case for them. Let's just have a look what is inside. I can't remember. It's been years since I've opened this thing. There we go. Pretty much... Nothing. <laughs> so it's a Ryobi BE one two eight five C twelve volt. Uh, that was the Nikad battery back in the day. Um, it says the battery pack uh, is by Ryobi Limited, Tokyo, Japan, but it was made in Taiwan. It's really scuffed and and bashed up. Not broken yet, but uh, have a look at this. This uh, label still looks damn good. You can read everything on it. You can even still read the serial number. It's been stamped on. Uh, Nowadays, the rubbish that comes on drills, the serial number is actually stamped into the plastic of the drill. That is impressive. A little bit of uh, thinners or paint stripper and that label, one wipe, she gone. <laughs> you can see over the years how things have, have kind of uh, gone the way of the ch This thing has been thrown around like nobody's business. And check that, Ryobi 12 volt drill drive. Even if you try and scratch it off, it doesn't come off. It's Super impressive, the way tools used to be. Variable speed, oh yes, of the day. Ah, that is not going to work. It's a Ryobi cordless drill driver BD1285R. I don't know what the R stands for, but it's like really cool or something. Uh, 12 volt DC, 480 RPM. So, back in the day, things were quite slow. Comparing it to this drill, it is 2000 RPM on the faster speed and 550 RPM on the slower speed. I have abused this drill. It is, I mean, I, I just can't, I just can't explain it enough. You shouldn't be treating tools like I've treated this thing. And I've wondered for many years, how the hell does this thing stand up to, to what I put it through? And I've actually only realized this now, but <laughs> this, being a, uh, well, a Ryobi, made in Taiwan, it's actually got quite a good chuck on it. It's got a Jacobs chuck on it. It says hand tight. Of course, that's uh, because it's hand tightened. USA and 10 millimeter or 3 eighths patented. That's definitely why this uh, chuck has lasted the way it has and put up to the abuse that I've put it through. Uh, and I mean, it still works, eh? It really, really works. Ugh. She's got this... Uh, kind of plastic it's not really an over molding I mean if you have a look at these drills um, nowadays these rubber over moldings um, they uh, I think they TPE over moldings uh, thermoplastic elastomers and they actually molded onto the plastic um, into the into the plastic itself and uh, you can see that uh, if you if you want to check it out maybe in one of my other videos so uh, when we when we took apart when we took about this car um, you could actually see the plastic or the TPE was molded and stuck to the plastic itself. This over molding is just clipped on. I think we have to get it off to be able to open this drill. Oh, 
Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, oh, there we go. Good to be in. Oh, almost. Almost. There we go. That's the nice uh, end hand bit there. Nice soft, soft rubber. I mean, this, this rubber <laughs> has stood up over the years at least, maybe even more than 10 years. You know what? It's actually probably more like 12 or 13 years old. I don't see any uh, material marks um, telling us what this is. It's just kind of like a semi-rigid, semi-rigid rubber. There's always one. There's always one. Here she comes, I think. Maybe. Do we have to take the chuck off first? Oh man. I think we have to take the chuck off. Oh. We're going to try this. Um, this is not an impact bit, so it's probably going to break. But we're going to try anyway. Yeah, that doesn't sound too good. Some good news is that I got the fastener loose. It wasn't easy. It was actually very tight and I think I might have damaged the internal bits of the drill a little bit. But, it doesn't matter. There it is. Yes, there we go. Just like that. Well, it wasn't that easy, uh, but it eventually came off. It seems like we've got to take off the front before we can actually split the casing. Oh yeah, there we go. I can actually feel it. Whoa, this thing is going to spring apart. And we're going to have shit flying everywhere. Remove that. Well, we've already... We've already lost one. <laughs> the yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> I lost my balls. Kind of think. I uh, think I should maybe go and look for them quickly. Should be sixteen balls. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we are missing three balls somewhere. Um, it kind of just shot out and rolled away. I don't exactly know where they went to. There's not much to these these old drills. I mean, this was a NiCad powered powered drill. Uh, it's basically just got the contacts where the battery sends the current into or through, and then it goes through the switch and straight into the motor. Ooh, okay. Found another ball, so we are now missing two. Here's the drill's case. If you have a look here, there's not a lot of ribbing in it. And it's not it's not very thick. It feels... I don't see any material markings inside the case. Um, now, that's not the case with uh, drills or products these days. Most products these days, like, uh, let's just take the Devolt for argument's sake. In a previous video, I took this one apart. And inside the case, I think it was somewhere around here, um, it actually said it was um, PC plus ABS, which is polycarbonate and an ABS mix. ABS, I can't remember what that stands for. Basically sewer pipe. <laughs> Same old shit. Um, but yeah, this one doesn't have anything in it. What we can do is we can check if it is reinforced, possibly with some glass fiber. Nope. Nope. Doesn't look like or feel like it is reinforced at all. Um, you can't hear any cutting of fibers when you when you cut through the material so there's a cute little detail in the case have a look at that there's a little plus sign and in the opposite end of the case there's a minus sign this battery terminal gets mounted in here um, and to get it the right way around I, uh, you put a little indication which is it's a nice little feature I suppose for the guys for the guys putting the drills together. Nice little feature of this drill is that it came with a level. Um, it used to have fluid in here with a little floaty um, bubble and that kind of tells you when you're drilling straight. Uh, not really used that much um, but as you can see now it's 
pretty empty. Here's our switch. It's uh, model D-82B, 7.2 to 15 volts DC, 20 amps. Uh, Capex-03. I don't see any... I don't see any other markings on it. Um, so, maybe that Capex is the brand of the switch. It feels pretty plasticky. <laughs> Look, it is very old, so I wouldn't expect much from that. And the the reverse mechanism is a little bit notchy, but it still works. This being a variable speed drill, uh, the speed is controlled by a MOSFET C25 forward slash 1 99544GS. Uh, yeah, just a standard old MOSFET. It's <laughs> obviously done a bit of work because the screw is a little bit loose. Look at the size of that heatsink compared to the actual MOSFET itself. It is a real big solid piece of aluminium. Uh, also got some heat uh, paste. Looks like the contacts are soldered on. Uh, they nicely covered up with this with this coating or with this uh, plastic. Looking at the main driver, it's a Mabuchi K0 DC motor uh, made in made in China. Smells <laughs> smells like it's had a hard life. Uh, nothing too special about it. It's just a off the shelf off the shelf part. Uh, we'll see if we can have a closer look inside at the brushes um, it's uh, as you can see it's pretty much a sealed unit so once the brushes wear out that's kind of the end of the life of the motor um, nowadays uh, you get especially items like this um, I don't know if you can see that there but if you have a look closely inside you can actually see the brushes and these brushes are replaceable brushes um, whereas the ones found in these types of motors are not replaceable, well not easily replaceable. Uh, the gearbox is quite clearly not aluminium, it is plastic, maybe a polycarbonate or a nylon. Um, you actually find this a lot in drills nowadays where they have polycarbonate or nylon with glass reinforced gearboxes. Um, from what I believe, the things like the vaults, uh, they still have uh, aluminium gearboxes. Well, some of the smaller models have uh, plastic gearboxes, but I think this one has got an aluminium gearbox, which uh, I'm a big fan of. Um, the aluminium, you know, kind of it's even though it's not a it's not a forged aluminium, it's a sintered uh, sintered piece uh, using powdered metallurgy. Uh, it's still pretty strong. Some of the guys actually say that uh, some of the plastics, depending on what they are, they can actually be stronger than aluminium. Uh, but I'm still of the opinion that an aluminium gearbox is superior. Uh, reason being because the gearboxes do uh, heat up, especially when you use a when you use a drill very hard. Uh, the gearboxes heat up, and any type of plastic is going to get soft before an aluminium box gets soft. So that's why I prefer aluminium. But the clever guys that know chemistry definitely know how to design stuff these days. Okay, so there we have it. The motor's got a small pinion gear on it. Um, this gear is friction fit onto the motor's shaft. Having a close look at it, it looks like it's a sintered metal gear. So, nothing wrong with that, um, not too bad. Have a look at the gearbox. Um, <laughs> have a look at that. So, it's a planetary gearbox. It looks like it's a double reduction. But these... What are these called? Sun gears? Sorry guys, I'm mistaken. This little gear here is uh, not a pinion, it's called a sun gear. The reason it's called a sun gear is because it goes into this gearbox and this gearbox is a planetary gearbox uh, these are the little planet gears one two three of them and then we've got the ring gear around so something that's not too impressive <laughs> these planet gears here they are actually plastic definitely not something that you will see in a premium drill in something premium, 
all of these gears will generally be sintered metal gears. Um, so yeah, not too sure what to make of that. There's our planetary gears. You can quite clearly see that they are plastic. These planet gears go onto a metal, I suppose, housing. I don't know what that is called. It's not a housing. Uh, a metal carrier. It's probably a metal carrier. So there we go. There's our center carrier for the second reduction. Uh, oh, and there go all the pieces. <laughs> that didn't work out too well. Here's the carrier and uh, the carrier for the first stage is mounted directly to uh, the sun gear of the second stage um, and the second stage planetary gears are all metal they are sintered metal as well so that's that's good to see um, I would imagine that this first stage reduction gears they don't take as much torque as the second stage uh, they definitely don't take as much torque and the reason for them being plastic, well the reason for them not being metal is uh, probably because it's slightly cheaper to make um, and that they don't really have to be metal but you'll find in premium drills these days the entire gearbox inside is has uh, metal gears this is the part that goes directly onto the drills chuck here's our ring gear you can see it's had a bit of a hard life so the way the torque system works on uh, most drills these days is that they use ball bearings and they jam the ball bearings between little humps. Um, so this is our ring gear and there you can see there's the little humps. So what happens is the ball bearings, they get jammed. this um, after 10 years of hard use now as I said this drill has been really used very hard look at the surface this is where the balls run over for the for the torque system the edges here are actually they are very sharp but if you have a look at where the balls have been running it's not not really worn having a closer look at the teeth here um, the teeth on the ring gear don't seem to be worn at all so that's very impressive for a drill that has done a lot of hard work in its life. Let's have a, let's have a close, close look at these. No, these also don't seem to be, don't seem to be worn. So that's uh, it's very impressive, very impressive. Having a look at the end of the gearbox, um, unfortunately I couldn't get this this bearing out. Uh, I don't have a small enough circuit pliers to fit in there so sorry about that uh, but what it looks like is it looks like it's got a bearing support on the gearbox side and a bearing support on the chuck side and that gives it good uh, vertical or lateral stability and this is where the chuck goes on. Now remember this drill has been used a heck of a lot over the last 10 or so years and the bearings still feel really really smooth so that is basically everything stripped and I must say I'm really impressed on how well this drill has worn or should I say how much or how little it has worn over the last 10 years um, I don't think they make <laughs> they make tools like they used to in the older days thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time cheers